Mark, thank you so much for coming today and for Great speaking to, to our group. You offered so many nuggets of wisdom and we're so grateful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to ask you a question as a follow-up. You offered an idea in your presentation that you, that you termed the anatomy of stuckness. Can you explain what that is for those <laughs> watching this today and what that means sure. for youth ministry in particular? Sure. Well, and, and I would say it's, it's as much for the church in general as it is for okay. youth ministry, but because we're talking about youth ministry today, uh, that's where it came up. But I mean, the, we all know it, it's almost a given that that our churches are continuing to do the same things that they did 20, 30, 40 years ago. And they worked beautifully in that context, yeah. but they just, they just don't anymore. And what we're lacking is um, both the, the sort of courage to fail and uh, the imagination to come up with something outside of the, so you know, I was with someone recently and they thought, uh, they said, you know, we believe in innovation. We even have seen churches that have clergy couples. Ah. And I thought, Interesting. well, um, that could have been an innovation 30 years ago, hmm. but probably not. And so we have these categories of, we sort of know how to tweak. Uh, we just don't know how to pivot. And yeah. so we can take, you know, the, the, the analogy, I mean, you've heard it, I'm sure you've heard it many times, but, you know, Kodak is just a great, you know, warning parable mm. that they, they wanted to improve on what they knew how to do, mm. which was film. And they could get a better film and they could market that film. That was the choice. Yeah. Uh, while someone else took their invention of digital photography. <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah. They, so, yeah. so churches, youth ministries in particular, I mean, even though youth ministries tend to be the, the research and development side of the church where the new ideas come from, right. it's so easy for us to get domesticated and say, we do Sunday school, we do youth group, we do mission trips, we do small groups, right. we do retreats. Mm -hmm. And that's the well-worn path. And so, but we know that the church of of today, not just the church of the future, the church of the today needs different solutions yeah. than uh, tweaking the current categories that we've got. Sure, sure, but taking the road less traveled is, is risky. Because there is no road. Right, there's <laughs> not even a road yet. It's not a well-worn road, it's not right. something we can even see, there's no road yet. Right, and so, so it's, it's, yeah. it's carving out that road, yeah. and it's so much easier to, to make better time going in the wrong direction. It's the illusion yeah. of progress. It's yeah. the illusion of efficiency. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when we just see churches in that, in that stuck place, at, you know, almost every church finds themselves looped in. And if we can pull ourselves out and say, ah, we're choosing this stuckness. I, I think the, you know, the folks at Stanford Design School and the, you know, all the design thinking, bringing sort of an art, artist perspective, um, that's you know sort of beyond either or categories that says we got to start with deep listening what does this community need mm -hmm. and then we then we prototype and then we iterate from there mm -hmm. um, rather than saying well let's just take what we got and make it a little better